Hey guys, what's up? This is Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. So in the video today, I'm going to be discussing what to expect in PA school, both your clinical year and your didactic year. So your didactic year, first year and clinical year, what to expect. So for those of you who are about to apply, apply to PA school, pre PA students or are about to start PA school, what to expect, I'll be discussing that in this video. And if you haven't seen my previous videos, uh, during my didactic year and during some of my clinical rotations, I really did try to do vlogs of how a regular day in PA school would be. So if you're interested, definitely check those out. So just a little bit about me real quick. I am a physician assistant now. I graduated in December of 2020. I am currently a critical care medicine resident. So I'm doing a residency in critical care medicine. It's a one year residency. And then after that, I hope to keep working in critical care medicine. So that's a little bit about me. So it's not a few months ago that I, it's been a few months ago that I graduated from PA school, but it has been a journey. So I started PA school in 2018, the fall of 2018, graduated December, 2020. My program is one of those longer programs. It's a two year and a half program. The first year is didactic year. The second year is clinical year and then you get that half a semester where you do a rotation and whatever you want to do so that's why it's called that capstone rotation so you get that extra long rotation it's about a three to four month rotation in your choosing so if you want to do critical care medicine which i did i did mine in the burn center so this is one of the differences between programs and what to keep in mind whenever you're applying to a program how long are they are they two years two years and a half some of them are even up to three years for pa programs so what to expect in PA school? Now that I've graduated from PA school, out of the two years and a half that I was in PA school, I have to say by far the hardest year was definitely my didactic year, which was the first year. That year was extremely hard because you have so much information that you're learning. And if you've seen other students talk about it, it's like you're learning out of a hose. You're drinking water out of a hose. So much information coming out in such a short period of time. So <coughs> you get like that year, right? For me, it was from that fall of 2020, I'm sorry, fall of 2018 till summer of 2019, which was didactic. And that includes anatomy and physiology. It includes pathophysiology. What's pathophysiology? Just understanding what does the disease do in the body, your physiology classes. Um, the other one was your clinical medicine classes, which is where you learn how to treat the patient, you learn how to diagnose the patient, you learn how is the patient going to present. Another one that we had was patient encounter. So in this class, they, treat, they teach you how to do physical exams, right? Depending on the system, like how to do a proper pulmonary exam, how to do a proper cardiac exam, how to do a proper ear exam. You learn how to use your stethoscope, you learn how to use your... Um, otoscope, you learn how to use a lot of your equipment that you see in the hot in the clinicals in the clinics right in your doctor's clinics so this is what that patient encounter class is they also teach you on how to recognize certain physical exam findings and what they're correlated with so in addition to that you also have pharmacology on top of that so pharmacology right you learn about the medications all of them you learn about the side effects of the medications how do they work? What do they do in the body and what they're indicated for? For example, antibiotics, these are indicated for gram negatives, gram positives, or these cover both. Why are these better than the other ones? The generations, etc. So pharmacology is another class that you take. In addition to that, I took a lab class also, and that was my second semester. They just teach you on how to draw blood, draw blood, right? how to put IVs. I know when we were drawing blood, we would practice on each other and especially like those really nice classmates that would just be like the guinea pig for everyone. They would have bruises everywhere on their arms. So we did a, we did a lot of that. We learned how to take UA samples, how to read things in for the urine analysis, the microscope, how certain things look under the microscope. We learned how to read labs. For example, CBCs, right? Your complete blood cell count. What does an increased amount of white blood cell counts mean? A decreased amount of white blood cell counts mean? So this was your lab class that we also took. We also took a radiology class. So they taught us how to read chest x-rays, right? Um, the majority of the time. Sometimes CT scans, sometimes ultrasounds were like sprinkled here and there. 
and then you also had another class that taught you how to suture right how to do INDs and so during all that you have that during your didactic year which is your first year and that's why this year is definitely one of the hardest ones but it's also one of the important ones because it really sets your ground for understanding medicine so if you don't do well during that first year or if you're just memorizing and dumping it's not going to help you out during your clinical year so that's why it's really important i know it's very hard during that first year that you ensure that you understand everything you understand the pathophysiology of the disease why is this medication given for this disease what is this medication going to do with that disease why should you not give this medication in this individual with the disease because what is it going to cause like what side effects so that's why it's really important that you understand your anatomy and physiology you know it in your pathophysiology well one of my nephrologists who i rotated with which is a fantastic nephrologist he told me something which I think is really interesting and I kept to heart. He's like, if you, in Spanish, he said, sin piezas chueco, then it means chueco, which means that if you start crooked, you're gonna end up crooked. What does that mean? From his understanding and from what he explained to me is that if you start bad, not learning the information, which is crooked, you're gonna end up being crooked. You're not gonna end up knowing the information right, right? And that's what he said and that's what he said. He's like, this is why I'm able to sleep at night. I'm able to, and I know that I did for the patient what was correct because I know my pathophysiology of the disease. I know the physiology of the body and I know the mechanism of action of the medication I'm giving to the patient. So that's why it's really important that you have a good basis of understanding during that didactic year. And if you've seen my previous videos, I'm a huge fan of repetition. And I really think that repetition is the key and that's how you ensure that you're not only memorizing and dumping, memorizing and dumping, but you are retaining that information for long term, right? It's going to help you out in your clinical rotation. So that's going to be your didactic year. You've made it through didactic year. During didactic year, you are definitely gonna have a, not have a life. My mom would be like, I haven't heard from you in like weeks. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I've been so busy with school. Very, very stressful, but it's really important that you take care of yourself during that didactic year, right? Um, so didactic year by far is definitely one of the most hardest rotation, hardest years by far. I had some of my classmates that they would tell me, you know what? I started PA school. Before PA school, I was a different person. And then after the didactic year, I turned into this anxious person. And so um, it's really important that you just relax during that rotation. Also, if you need help, ask your professors, ask your classmates. So it's really like swimming during that first year. So if you pass your first year and you know all your information really, really well, right? You really ensure that you worked hard, you know your anatomy physiology, you know your pharmacology, your patho, then that's when your clinical rotation starts. So that's gonna be your second year. I do have to say that second year was not as hard as first year, but like I said, second year is really where you apply everything you learn during your didactic year. So this is where you go into your rotations. And according to the NCCPA, which is the National Board of Physician Assistants, you do need to have certain rotations that need to be completed before you graduate as a PA in order to be certified as a PA or licensed as a PA. And so these rotations are, you'll do a rotation in ob right, which is women's health, babies. You'll do a rotation in psychiatry. You'll do a rotation in family medicine, internal medicine. And internal medicine usually involves cardiology. In my case, I did nephrology, hospital medicine, etc. Internal medicine, emergency medicine, uh, surgery is another one, pediatrics is another one, and then usually your eighth one is going to be in the elective of your choice. Some programs may have extra electives, my program actually had one elective because then after that we had that capstone like we discussed, and so those are usually those uh, eight rotations, in my case it would be nine, right, because two of them are going to be your electives. And so during these rotations, like I said, you reapply what you learned in PA school, and especially during that first didactic year. And it really helps solidify everything that you learned, right? Because you read it, you read it, you read it, but not until you see it in a patient, it really stays with you. And I have a lot of patient cases that I remember 
of certain businesses that I would read about and I learn about it even more and it saves me because I saw it in a patient or I treat the patient with that. Another thing to keep in mind is that during your clinical rotations, textbook medicine is very different from what you practice in clinic. So even though textbooks can say, this is first line treatment for this disease, in clinic, you're not gonna do that and that's okay, right? Doctors do things their own way. And so just keep that in mind also, but that's how your clinical rotations are, are going to be your second year of PA school, your didactic year. And the difference with your clinical year in comparison to your, to your didactic year is that in didactic, I would have an exam every week, if not every other week, but the majority of the time it was an exam every week, whether it was on radiology. And certain weeks, we would have this thing called Black Monday, where it was a Black Monday because we would have four exams that, that day or three exams that day. So that entire day was just devoted to only exams. So we had exams the entire day. So we had exams constantly during your didactic year and that's what kind of adds up to stress. So during that year, I spent the majority of my time studying. Weekends, I studied usually like 11 hours or 12 hours because during the week, sometimes I would be too tired to study, especially after I got out of class, I would just go home and sleep um, to start the next day, right? And during your clinical rotations, during that year, you have a little bit more time to study and you don't have as many exams. So during clinical rotations, you only have that, have that end of rotation exam, which is also known as your EOR. And that exam is going to be dependent on the clinical rotation you're doing during that time. And it's usually at the end, so it's about a month rotation, for example, and you'll do it on the last day of the rotation. So for example, if you're doing a rotation in OBGYN, then you're gonna have your exam on OBGYN. And usually that exam is written by the NCCPA, which is the National Committee of Physician Assistants. So your university will not write it, but the committee of PAs will write that. So you're in essence studying from day one that you start that rotation until the last day of that rotation for that EOR. Another thing that you will have during your clinical rotations is gonna be your OSCE. What's an OSCE? OSCE is just an exam where they examine you on your clinical examination skills, right? So they'll give you a patient and it's a fake patient and the patient's gonna be presenting with symptoms and you have to go in there into the room with the professor on the side and the professor is grading you. You have to ensure that you do appropriate physical exams depending on what the patient's coming in for. So for example, if the patient's coming in for abdominal pain, you have to make sure that you do an abdominal exam, right? If a patient's coming in with abdominal pain, you're not gonna look into their ears. That doesn't make sense. So they grade you on how your abdominal exam is did you do it appropriately, right? Was it thorough or was it precise or concise? And then after that, what labs are you gonna order for this patient? What's your differential diagnosis? What's your diagnosis? And then also what's the feedback you're gonna give to the patient? What's your teach back? So that's what they grade you on. Certain programs only have one. I know one of my classmates that I spoke to from a different program, she said that she only had one OSCE at the end of the year. My program had an OSCE for every rotation. So every rotation we had an OSCE depending on what rotation we were in. So for example, if it's OBGYN, you were required to ensure you know how to do a public exam because you might get a, an OSCE on how to perform a public exam. Of course, it's a fake public, but a public exam and or even a breast exam, right? So the OSCE is usually gonna be on common diagnosis or common complaints for each rotation. So pediatrics, right? You see a lot of ear infections, so you might get an OSCE or a complaint with ear pain. So that's what your OSCE is. And then once you graduate from PA school, then that's when you take your pants. So that's what you are going to be expected, what you're gonna to expect to see in PA school. So by far are those two years didactic. Didactic is the most hard, hardest, but it's also the most important one because this is where you kind of learn your basis of medicine and of everything. So ensure that you learn as much as you can and you know your information well because it's going to help you for your clinical rotations and to do well on your ERs and then do well on your PANS. And it's like I, I talk to other students, right? And I tell your students that during that clinical year, you're also preparing yourself for your PANS. So if you study really hard for your end of rotation exams, the questions are very similar to the PANS. And if you study very well and you do well in these EORs, you're going to do very well on your pants. So just keep that in mind.
All right, guys, as always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions for me or anything like that, make sure you comment below, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.